And we're back in the garage to build something for the basement again. Okay, my wife wants a sewing table, but like big, so she can like lay out fabric and then like cut it out and patterns and large is the key word here. And I decided I was going to try to build that uh, similarly to how I built the, the, the previous playground thing, minimum cutting from pieces that I can kind of buy already. So basically you can buy it, you can build this entirely from two by fours. I forget how many, don't sue me. And I'm going to tell you what the cut list is on those two by fours uh, right now, because if I say I'm going to put it in the description later, I'm clearly going to forget and not do it. Okay. So two by fours, you, you ready? Seven foot, nine inches by three, make cut three of those three foot, nine inches. Cut six of those, one foot nine inches, four of those, and the legs, whatever height you want, eight of them, in this case, 32 inch legs. That's, that's the two by fours. Then I bought uh, three sheets, one four by eight sheet and two two by four sheets. Now these were things I could get there. I got hardboard, I think it's called hardboard. I forget, it's, it's basically like particle board. I'll, I'll show you. This is the stuff, you've seen it, like, this is the stuff you get, like they make pegboards out of. My pegboards on the wall were this stuff. I painted them white initially. I don't know if I'm gonna paint this white. Oh, well, cross the bridge when we come to it. Anyway, I got two of them for two by fours uh, and then a four by eight for the top. And I think for thickness, they're something quarter inch. I don't know. And the design of this, it has two of these. See this thing that I built? This is like, like one of these and kind of legs. I build a second one of these and then the top sits on top and has like, it's ringed with two by fours and there's a brace on the middle. You'll see, I don't know why I'm explaining this. And I did this because uh, it's, it's just like a workbench that I designed. So I, I designed a workbench a few residences ago and it was basically made two freestanding like leg sections with a shelf and one bench that went over the top. The dimensions were very different. But it's the same basic idea and I liked that because I could take, I could build the leg section, four legs, low, low shelf, two of those, I could take those off of the top and transport it all together. A bunch of the features I may have mentioned uh, came from a, a loft that I designed when I was in college. And we're going to go over those a little bit later, specifically how uh, it's, it's fairly rigid without having any like diagonal cross braces. My head's kind of all over the place lately. I'm not, not really focusing on the planning and that's relative to how little I focused on the planning beforehand, uh, which, which was admittedly not great. I'm a little off my game. Things have been happening, nothing YouTube related. Don't, don't need to go into too much, although I may have to spend a not insignificant amount of time with a shrink at some point soon, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll bottle those emotions right up and continue with this. So you see these legs here, have cutouts. Cut out over here, one on each side. They basically allow the uh, two by fours to go through it. Cut them out a little bit bigger, lay them out with this thing. I don't even know why I have it here. I'm not gonna touch it a single time for the rest of this build, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, maybe. And my terrible saw. Take a look. This thing is missing teeth. I don't even know why I chopped a piece of it out of there. Yeah, this is from Home Depot. I cut a bunch of fire bricks with it. Still works. 10 out of 10 dumpy tools. Would buy again. So I should probably explain. I said I cut these out a little bit bigger than normal. A two by four, as I mentioned in the last video, is actually one and a half by three and a half. So I cut this out one and five eighths by three and five eighths, just to keep everything simple and make sure nothing lines up. Although if you, make, if you cut them a little bit bigger, then you have like wiggle room. And wiggle room can help especially if you're not too concerned for accuracy. So I should probably explain why I'm building this in the garage if this thing is for the basement. And truth be told, I like to build things in situ. That's why I built the playground down there to begin with. And I would prefer to do that with this, especially because I hate moving stuff. But this thing is so big, this table, that we're gonna have to move some furniture around 
and actually throw some out just to make space to have like working room around this thing. And uh, it's, it's basically going to make like two or three of the table things down there redundant. So they're going away. Uh, I'm also, we're also ripping up the carpet down there because it got flood damage. And we, we, don't, we don't got time for that. We want it out of there so we can have a different floor set up. Working on that. Again, not YouTube related. I'm off topic. I'm rambling. Is that normal? Of course, some of you people said the stuff I build is not that cool anyway. You just watch because of all the rambling. So should I keep rambling? Probably. Speaking of the rambling, this pathetic excuse for a Japanese pole saw that I have destroyed Got me thinking, I've been watching some woodworking videos lately. Don't know why they popped up in my feed. Don't know why any of them do, to be honest. Uh, on Japanese woodworking, Korean woodworking, Chinese architecture. And uh, it's pretty interesting. The Japanese stuff especially, they got some complicated joinery. It's kind of cool when you can watch them just like pull a bunch of pins out and then just like pull apart an entire building and move the board somewhere else, the beams, and just build it again like it was before. No nails, no glue. Very cool. I do not have that level of saw ability or chisel ability or tool. I do have some nice chisels, but this saw I have thoroughly ruined. It, was, it worked quite well when I got it though. I apologize all the moving the camera around. I'm still getting used to framing with this camera. The, the angle of the lens, the, the old camera I had is a wide angle lens. This is not, so it's, it's very difficult to set shots up which is to say I wasn't very good at it to begin with. Never once read anything or learned anything about filmmaking. And I think it shows. Although I've become quite practiced at the standard YouTube jump cut. Which seems to be the way to go. Is that not the way to go? Like, everyone does it. All the cool kids are doing it. Should I succumb to peer pressure? These little cutoffs, by the way, very nice sticking under the legs of stuff on these concrete floors. It seems like I've never seen a concrete floor that was actually level. This garage isn't level and the concrete floor in my basement is certainly not level. The closer you get to the drain, the less level it is, but I suppose that's on purpose so water can like drain. Okay, so this is where I make myself a liar from earlier. This is the, uh, the not four foot long one, the almost four foot long one, three foot nine inch. And this is the 32 inch leg piece. Said I wasn't gonna use this, but clearly I wasn't thinking ahead. The positioning of this shelf, I, I put the shelf at the middle point, 16 inches up from the end. And since this is 32 inches long, it should be 16 inches from both. Just double check that I sawed it right. Yep, I'm gonna mark it on the face and around one corner, just to make it easy. And this board doesn't actually go like on the end here. It goes like this, assuming the shelf, the shelf board's on this and this is up, which makes no sense the way you're looking at it, but just trust me. And to make it easier, what I do, I kind of take a look where I figure that's gonna be, you know, and then I try to put a screw hole into this because it's gonna go into the end grain of this through the side of this. Mark out there's roughly where the uh, two by four is gonna meet. So I'm gonna try to put a screw near the top and near the bottom. You only put one screw in, you know the whole thing's gonna pivot around that. Two kind of keeps it a little more stable. And actually, I'm not gonna put it on this side, I'm gonna put it on the other side. You'll kind of follow along, I suppose. I don't know why I need to explain this because the, the plans are actually very simple. And once it starts biting through there, there I'm just gonna pre-drill that. Line up the edge of that with that mark I made on the side. There we go, that's not too bad. Of course, now I realize you can't see what I'm doing. You know, I'm gonna need some opinions from you people on workbenches. I know this is a sewing table. So many of the, the standard like workbench or woodworking bench, metalworking bench, welding table things might not apply. But I've heard a couple of schools of thought when it comes to tabletop benches from, uh, from woodworking benches specifically. Do you want the shelf all the way to the edge, flush, or do you want an overhang? Now, I've heard flush 
woodworking especially nice because you can then clamp something right on the face and like plane like the top of board or something. Overhang is what I'm going to do on the top, not this shelf. I'm going to leave an overhang of about an inch and a half. Uh, and my, my theory there is you want to be able to, because it's a sewing table and cutting out fabric, you want to be able to lay fabric over the edge, this relatively thin edge, and clamp like this to the edge, to this thing, very thin. And, and she'll be able to use just like, you know those little like paper clamp things that you use for clamping, you know, like 10 or 15 pages together or whatever. Uh, you could use that or like, you know, clothes pins or whatever to clamp fabric to the edge if you needed to hold it in place. And clamping it all along the edge will hold it and you can foot go on the other side, pull it tight. So what, what do you think? Overhang or flat? Just leave your opinions down below. For woodworking bench, I would say flush. Flush, no overhang. For this, I'm going to do overhang. I guess if your opinions are different than mine, too bad, table's already built by the time this video goes up. And I'm not making it like a 15-parter just to put a few boards together. I'm, I'm going to condense this into one, even if things over 20 minutes, which would break my personal rule. Not that it matters. Ugh. All right, repeat on the other side in a mirrored fashion. Here's another thing to ramble about since I got it on my mind. What's the deal with these like building stuff ASMR channels where people just build stuff in, in like silence and all you can hear is the tools? A couple questions. One, why did someone think that was a good idea? And two, why can't I stop watching those? It's uh, I don't know, it's baffling on many levels. Like seriously, I mean, I think the benefit is that since there's no talking, you can I can watch like channels from other countries where the everything's all in Japanese or Korean. One of the ones I watched is in Korean. It makes some really cool furniture. Occasionally, it puts in English subtitles, which is very handy. Another thing I'll say: notice how I'm not taking much care to uh, line everything up all square. I'm just kind of holding it and screwing it in. Well, these screws, I think I mentioned it before, have quite a large section that is unthreaded near the top. So by the time it gets all the way in, pretty much all the threads is in this one. So tightening it just pulls this board into that board. It doesn't actually hold the board out from this board because of those threads, which is handy. Also, I cut the edges, I cut the ends, pretty much square. I didn't use like a miter box or anything. I just kind of did it by eye, but like I, I wing it when I make everything and eventually you get kind of like competent enough that when you just wing it, it still works. That's coming very handy. Those skills to develop, gotta say. Now you'll recognize we have built this end of that. So I gotta build another one of these to flip around for the other side. Same kind of deal. This isn't coffee. Bamboo leaf tea. Smells a little bit like grass clippings. Not caffeinated, although it is like 11 o'clock right now, so I probably shouldn't be drinking caffeine anyway. Do you think yard clippings would make decent tea? Probably not. See those shims already coming in useful. Always feels good when they stand up on their own. You know, they don't like wobble or fall over. Good sign. Either these aren't warped or they're warped exactly the same way as the floor. So here's where you grab the one foot nine inch boards. They actually attach on the inside, like so. Great, I don't have a single screw that's the right length. So several times I've made mention of a loft that I built in college. I have no pictures remaining of that loft uh, or designs. I didn't design that on SketchUp. That was a pen and paper job. And it was very, very stable. Now when I built it, I didn't have any of the, of the cross, like diagonal braces in there. And I thought that would be okay because I was actually going to uh, 
mount it. Like, like I had these these brick walls looked like a prison cell, the dorm room. They weren't quite parallel. They're a little little open, and they're, they're kind of far apart. So I made it a really long loft with kind of an elaborate, overly complicated thing system where it was actually a frame that hung the bed underneath it so I could have ample space like head space underneath way more complicated than it needed to be but I, I actually wedged it so I had the the long beams that everything hung on were all the way to the edge of the wall and I only gave myself about about half an inch inch half an inch and I ended up like like pinning it like a big wedge in the end and pounding it in so the whole thing was wedged tight against the walls. Now I thought that would be, that should be perfectly capable of holding the thing in without allowing it to rock or anything. Cause like my floor, the RA, he had built a loft. And let me tell you, he was a vocalist. He was not an engineer. And I was not an engineer either, but I had the benefit of learning from his terrible mistakes in his loft that nearly killed him. So I built mine and I actually built it in my parents' backyard before I took it to college. Set it up, tested it by like hanging. There was one, one really complicated part that I was kind of worried because it wasn't like all the weight wasn't sitting on wood. There was some weight hanging on screws. So I just, I, I did like the two pull-ups that I could manage at the time. And I gotta say, I was shocked by something. Like it, it wouldn't wiggle around. And there was none of those cross braces. And I eventually learned what I did was uh, sort of stabilize it enough using just the screws holding it together. And I'm going to use a similar method to attach these uprights to the top part. But that's a few minutes from now. And wouldn't you know, I used that loft for a little while in college and it never once killed me. So I count that as a plus. It was only made possible, however, because this van that I've been neglecting uh, still worked back then and the the build required one board that was like 12 and a half feet long and I couldn't get that in a truck but I could fit it in this van through the back window so if I shut the back doors and the, the plank of wood was all the way to the back it was a two by four uh, two two by fours I think all the way to the back the front of the two by four sat on the dash and then it put a big, you know, thing over the front. So if I hit the brakes, it wouldn't just smash its way through the windshield. Uh, I never did. The brakes on that thing suck anyways. I don't think it could have stopped fast enough. So now we have this contraption. It's not particularly stable. You can see it's wiggling like this, you know, kind of racking. That's where this top part comes in. Ta-da! Okay, so now what I can't show you is that this whole thing is bent too far over this way relative to this board. So what I'm gonna do, what I did on this one, I'm gonna get it, you know, straightened enough that I can get one side screwed in. Hang on, this side's not too terribly off. There we go. That's not too far off, not perfect. I'm using the top here as a guide and a brace because I'm holding everything steady by kneeling on it. Uh oh, I think that screw hit another screw. Let's try that again. Yeah, that was a little better. Sorry about that big hole in it. There we go. Now we got two of these. Now these, these legs aren't very stable. As you can see, there's some wiggle room. And I'm leaving it like that. The other one's exactly the same because I want to be able to fit the top on, get everything set, adjust the legs so that everything is actually sitting on the floor stable. And then I'm going to add a whole bunch more screws to just tighten the whole thing up. Okay. 